Hey, this is Pastor Bungie Garrett, and I want to take some time today to present you with another word of encouragement. Well, just in case you missed it, the Federal Bureau of Investigation and the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, they recently issued an official announcement in order to raise awareness that, and I quote them here, distributed denial of service attacks on election infrastructure or adjacent infrastructure that support election operations could hinder public access to election information, but would not impact the security or integrity of election processes. According to a senior advisor from the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, there's no reason for us to think that these DDoS attacks will impact the integrity of the democratic process for the 2024 election. Here's how she explains it, and I, and I quote her here, With election day less than 100 days away, it is important to help put into context some of the incidents the American public may see during the election cycle that, while potentially causing some minor disruptions, will not fundamentally impact the security or integrity of the democratic process. Okay, gotcha. So uh, if we find ourselves experiencing disruptions uh, in, in, in the voting process here, don't worry about it. If, if we see maybe massive spikes in votes coming in at three o'clock in the morning for uh, Harris and Waltz, uh, this is just the new normal for the democratic process of America. Uh, the, the same CISA senior advisor went on to add this, and I quote again, DDoS attacks are one example of a tactic that we have seen used against election infrastructure in the past and will likely see again in the future, but they will not affect the security or integrity of the actual election. They may cause some minor disruptions, or prevent the public from receiving timely information. It is important to talk about these potential issues now because nefarious actors like our foreign adversaries or cyber criminals could use DDoS incidents to cast doubt on the election systems or processes. An informed public is key to neutralizing the impact of foreign influence operations and disinformation, which is why we put out this advisory on what a DDoS attack could and could not do. Okay, gotcha. So nefarious actors that include foreign adversaries or cyber criminals, they're, they're going to do their best to alter the outcome of November's election by digitally manipulating election results. But, but we should go ahead and just believe that, you know, this is going to be the freest and fairest election since 2020. The Deputy Assistant Director of the FBI, he also assured us that we have nothing to worry about by informing us, and I quote here, DDoS are low-level attacks that work by overwhelming websites with traffic to render them inaccessible. Given the prevalence of false claims about DDoS attacks in prior U.S. and foreign elections, we are warning that DDoS attacks against election-related websites could temporarily disrupt access to some online election functions like voter lookup tools, but would not prevent voting or compromise the integrity of voting systems. This warning highlights the importance for voters to seek out information about how to vote prior to election day and demonstrates the FBI's and CISA's continued commitment to sharing information with the public about potential cyber threats. Okay, gotcha. So, Rather than worrying about these low-level DDoS attacks, which often occur on Election Day, well, we should just go ahead and vote early. Because, you know, early votes can't be manipulated at all, ever. It's completely impossible. <laughs> oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. Early votes can easily be altered. And the reason why is because voting machines can easily be hacked. According to one expert, voting machines can easily be hacked in less than five minutes and these machines can be easily manipulated in many different ways, which include the ability to change votes after the fact or by altering totals, whether adding or subtracting. But don't take my word for it. I'll remind you of the computer expert who hacked a Dominion voting machine in front of a judge last year during a court case in Georgia. It was actually back in June of 2023. That's when Professor J. Alex Halderman from the University of Michigan demonstrated before a judge how he could use a Bic pen and a smart card 
to easily copy, edit, and change votes on a Dominion voting machine and within seconds. That being the case, well, there should be no doubt that DDoS attacks aren't the only issue when it comes to election integrity. The touch screen voting machines can easily be manipulated by those who want to alter the results of an election. Case in point, let's consider the recent evidence from Georgia's uh, Fulton County 2020 presidential election. And according to election integrity expert Joe Rossi, more than 17,000 votes were counted despite the fact that there was no ballot image. Also, more than 20,000 original votes from tabulators were created out of thin air, and nearly 4,000 duplicates were counted and inserted via intentional human intervention. Now remember, Biden is said to have won Georgia by a very narrow margin of just over 12,000 votes. And yet, as we consider the 17,000 votes which were counted, despite the fact that there was no ballot image, and the 20,000 votes from tabulators that were created out of thin air, well, there seems to be a case for believing that Trump may have actually won Georgia. According to the reports, there were similar anomalies and discrepancies in the six key swing states, which included the mysterious disappearance of a Milwaukee flash drive that actually contained crucial absentee voter information in the 2020 presidential election. That's right, the flash drive was briefly lost during the early hours of Wednesday, November 4th. And, and, and you know, as the world was waiting for Milwaukee to reveal its ballot counts, the, 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 they lost and then found this flash drive. <laughs> Not to worry, this was the freest and fairest election ever. Listen, time would fail me to share all of the anomalies and discrepancies that occurred during the 2020 presidential election, which then would lead a reasonable person to question the election results in those six key swing states. And as we consider the questionable election results that placed President Biden in the White House, well, I can't help but to wonder why the alphabet agencies like the FBI and the CISA, well, they're already assuring us that the 2024 presidential election is going to be the safest and securest election ever. Do they know something that we don't know? Sadly, both tickets don't really seem to care about the true integrity uh, that comes along with the person who is ready to defend the life of preborn persons. You see, as we consider both tickets here, well, on the left hand, we have Harris and Walls who believe in the so-called right to abortion without any limits. And we can be certain that if they win, they're going to push for the legalization of selective infanticide as progressives continue to justify the extermination of babies who somehow survive their abortion. On the right hand, though, we have Trump and Vance, who at best are only going to seek a federal ban on abortions after 15 weeks of pregnancy. And you should know that the fetal stage of development begins around the ninth week and continues until the baby is born. And listen, by the 10th week, the arms, hands, fingers, feet, and toes are fully formed. Fingernails and toenails are beginning to develop and, and external ears are beginning to form. By the 11th week of pregnancy, the preborn person is beginning to develop facial features and the movements of hands and feet begin to occur in the womb. By the 12th week of pregnancy, the preborn person has a functioning circular system, and not only that, but the digestive and urinary systems are also working. By the 13th week of pregnancy, the preborn person has functioning vocal cords, and the child's head begins to grow proportionate to its body. By the 14th week of pregnancy, the preborn person has hair and fingerprints, not to mention external genitals by which the gender of the baby is identified. And by the 15th week of pregnancy, the preborn person begins to make more purposeful movements in the womb by sucking its thumb and smiling and these sorts of beautiful things. With all this in mind, I'm just having a hard time with this choice between the party that wants abortion without limits and the so-called conservative party that refuses to make a federal case out of the murder of the most innocent among us. I've said it before, and I'll say it again and again. If abortion is wrong at 15 weeks, then it's wrong at 15 days. And the reason why is because life begins at fertilization. So then when it comes to the integrity of the 2024 presidential election, listen, I'm not just concerned about the problem with the issues surrounding voter fraud. But I'm also concerned about the integrity of the candidates on both sides of this aisle who are willing to allow the execution of the most innocent all in order to win an election. 
I want to remind you of something King Solomon said in Proverbs chapter 6. There he declares, These six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift in running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among brethren. Please trust me when I tell you that the Lord hates the hands of those who shed innocent blood. And listen, this is true regardless of whether the blood is shed after 15 weeks of pregnancy or at the end of a full-term uh, pregnancy. The Lord hates the hands of those who shed the innocent blood of preborn persons. And with that being the case, it's time for Christians to take a strong stand and start looking for leaders who are ready to abolish abortion. And we should do this by acknowledging the fact that abortion is the shedding of innocent blood. As a Christian pastor, I encourage every born-again believer to realize that the only way of securing election integrity is for both parties to seek out candidates who actually have the moral integrity to stand against the bloodshed of pre-born babies. And as we take this stand in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord will help us to fight the good fight of faith and all for the glory of God.